Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 10 for August the 9th, 2020. We're still in Unit 3 entitled Faith and Wisdom in James. And our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is Talk is Cheap. Our devotion reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 26 through 31. Uh, background scriptures taken from the book of James chapter 1 verses 19 through 27 and we'll be studying today from James chapter 1 verses 19 through 27 our key verse reads do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves do what it says it's taken from James chapter 1 verse 22 uh, from the NIV translation our lesson aims today, number one, is to understand that the proof of wisdom is not merely in what one says, but in what one does, especially in what one does for those who are in need. And then secondly, to feel compassion for those who are most vulnerable and desire to act on their behalf. Thirdly, to engage in ministry that demonstrates a religion that is pure and undefiled before God. We have three outlines today that are a part of our lesson. Uh, the first outline is entitled Quick and Slow. Our second outline is entitled Doers, Not Just Listeners. And then the third outline is entitled Real Religion. And so we certainly, as always, we thank and praise God for yet another opportunity uh, to share God's word with you and we thank God that we're still here and that we still have an opportunity to engage in the word of God um, in a way that we are edified in a way that we are saved in a way that we are healed and we just thank and praise God that we are able to embrace the times uh, that we're living in um, even in hope confident expectation that God will still fulfill the promises that he made to his children uh, who believe in him and so we want to get into this lesson today we have quite a bit of ground to cover we uh, encourage you to grab your Bible if you're able and um, grab some notes or be prepared to take some notes and some scriptures that we're going to give you and we want to make sure that as we engage the Word of God that we uh, enter into God's Word to study it to uh, seek to be better to seek to walk away differently than we came into our study and so that is our prayer for us today and we certainly are praying for all of the families today we know that many are affected by this virus uh, we know that uh, we have lost many uh, in um, just a few days uh, and so we just have to continue to be prayerful in the face of all of these things but we want to read just a little bit of the biblical context that is offered from our lesson quarterly and then we want to make a few points from our lesson standard and then we're going to get into um, the study of our lesson but in last Sunday's lesson uh, James emphasized the importance of obtaining godly wisdom and that's in James chapter 1 verse 5 so the Greek word used for wisdom is Sophia uh, this word is used throughout the New Testament to describe believers ability to properly discern and conform uh, to the will of God and then from um, uh, our lesson standard uh, as we think about this lesson we are reminded of what happened the account in Genesis chapter 3 uh, when Adam and Eve failed to uh, tune out the contradictory voice um, uh, so the disconnect between hearing and doing was and in and is at the heart of sin uh, this lesson is also the story of Israel even after clear evidence of God's presence uh, during the exodus the Israelites failed to obey uh, instead creating an idol to worship you can see that in Exodus chapter 32 um, 
but Israel never seemed to make connection between their actions and their results. So this pattern was fundamentally uh, a problem of the uh, of the heart. You can see that in Proverbs chapter four, uh, verse twenty-three. But in Genesis three, as we study, we remember the context of James' audience uh, and some of the things that they were dealing with uh, was economic oppression. There was some infighting and also some persecution. Um, but our last Sunday's lesson uh, context uh, and scripture references um, is taken from James the Epistle, uh, James chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, uh, James chapter 3, verses 13 through the fourth chapter of James chapter 12, and we also uh, can look at James chapter 5, verses uh, 1 through 6. So we need to remember that James' audience. Uh, is of Jewish origin and so they would have knowledge of the Old Testament context and the law uh, that would have applied to them uh, that they should have understood and so God is still requiring uh, that we obey him and one word that stuck out uh, in my mind as I studied this lesson that I'll share with you uh, is forgiveness, God's forgiveness. I want you to think about it as we get into this lesson today because this is the basis of our relationship with God. Uh, we realize that God has forgiven us and we enjoy the benefits of that forgiveness. And one of the things that uh, we have to be able to exemplify even in uh, our day and culture now is that forgiveness that we have received and we'll talk about that a little bit because as we engage uh, in this practical lesson and our dealings with others it's very important that we keep the framework of God's forgiveness in our minds or in our hearts and in our spirit as we deal with our fellow man so we'll talk about that as we go along. So we want to pick this lesson up today as our first outline that is entitled uh, Quick and Slow. Uh, this is taken from James chapter uh, 1 verses 19 through 21 and I want to read this from the um, NIV translation. James says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Verse 20, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Uh, verse 21, therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. So as we think about these verses, the question comes to mind, what do we do with all of the scriptures that we quote? Uh, what do we do with these things? How do we um, um, share our faith uh, with others? And so as I shared with you, uh, God is still requiring us to exhibit the kind of righteousness that is befitting of those who have um, uh, been forgiven. Uh, so James admonishes his hearers, his listeners, to be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. And that word angry, we want to make sure that we highlight that uh, as we look at today's uh, context uh, because uh, as the verse 20 tells us that human anger does not produce the righteousness uh, that God desires. Uh, it's nothing wrong with us becoming um, uh, angry at things that happen in our lives and I believe that there is a reasonableness to this passage but we have to temper the things that make us angry with how we let these things go. Uh, and so if we're going to exhibit the righteousness of God, then it just comes to, to mind that, that we need to be able to 
uh, have the kind of anger that that we don't lash out that we lose control and that we don't forgive and that we don't let these things go because these are the kinds of things that are not in right standing with what we have received in terms of God's forgiveness as I shared with you earlier none of us would be in the position that we are today as children of God had not God let the past go had not God let the issues of our sinfulness go so we can enjoy a relationship so what God did into uh, in, in the fact that he his our sins uh, made him angry if you will God offered his son Jesus Christ to atone for that and so Jesus bore our sins uh, took our sins upon himself and that he was thoroughly judged and he was thoroughly punished uh, uh, for our sins that we might be able to go free why am I saying that because that is the framework and that is the righteousness that we are required as Christians to as we begin to deal with our brothers and sisters that we have a measure of balance that we learn how to let these things go so verse 21 says uh, therefore get rid of all moral filth and, and the evil that is so prevalent uh, uh, and humbly accept the word of God uh, uh, planted in you which can save you humbly accept uh, without that spirit of pride and so it, it, it's understandable that all of us face the evil uh, 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 that, uh, that 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 or uh, 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 brought up on us by others if you take in context of this lesson uh, your reference would take you back over to Acts chapter 12 and you might recall uh, during that time uh, when Herod uh, Agrippa began to uh, meet out all of this uh, violence or persecution on the saints of God and so uh, he began to do things uh, or to create violence within the church uh, and so if you look at this uh, in Acts chapter 12 verse 1 it says now about that time Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church verse 2 says then he killed James the brother of John with the sword and because he saw it pleased the Jews he proceeded further to seize Peter also uh, and this was during the time of Passover so uh, this kind of thing comes up on us as believers from unbelievers Herod is is acting out uh, and sometimes uh, we want to get in front of God if you go on and read Acts chapter 12 particularly where it gets uh, when it goes down to verse 20 through 24 you will see that God intervened uh, on behalf of, of the church and the pride that Herod had and Herod died a violent death why am I saying that we have to let God uh, handle these matters and keep ourselves I heard the word of the Lord says God says vengeance is mine uh, uh, I will repay God will take care of these things if we allow him to if we would humble ourselves if we not be so quick uh, 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 to lash out uh, James is saying we should be quick to listen and and be slow to speak uh, as my dad would say don't let the first thing come up come out uh, and so we have to be careful about these things that we don't exacerbate the situation and get ourselves into more trouble because uh, we we wanted to speak uh, uh, rather than to listen so we have to be careful about these things so even in worldly philosophy anger is seen as uh, very troublesome so uh, that that's why James is entering uh, into a discussion about how to 
handle the handle these things because uh, our sins originate from improper thoughts in our hearts and the end result uh, of complying with James three commands is ridding ourselves of moral filth and evil is continuing uh, our salvation through the sanctification process and so uh, if we understand uh, human nature and we understand what is going on in our culture today anger is causing us to overstep our bounds and so uh, I hope that you can see this in a practical way and I I get the fact that it's difficult to get past some things and I have experienced that myself particularly when someone has wronged me uh, uh, or has done some things to me uh, 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 in a negative light or to cause me to stumble and to fall uh, the mature Christian uh, uh, has to still go before God and pray uh, for our enemies you can read some of these things back over in the Beatitudes uh, the Sermon on the Mount if you will in uh, Matthew chapter 5 so we want to keep that in mind so the question is asked why is it human nature to respond quickly think slowly and regret for a lifetime so that is in our nature uh, we we don't let the Holy Spirit help us in these regards and we choose to be presumptuous in our activity and we overstep and then when we get into the heat of these things uh, 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 in an argument if you will that nobody wants to stop talking uh, and then it escalates and so we have to understand that as tempers flare uh, we, seem, we seem to lose consciousness uh, of being sober in our thinking the more yelling and the more swearing and the more uh, uh, that we begin to uh, 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 allow our tongues to get us deeper and and so uh, I, I find even as as a minister and I'm sure you do as a believer that you've had uh, difficult times where uh, you struggle to let things go and so we have to really employ the help of God in these areas so we don't get past or move past the fact that uh, these individuals uh, 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 as Jesus said from the cross and as, even as Stephen has said in Acts chapter 7 to for, ask for forgiveness of these individuals who do not know what they are doing so I hope that we're able to keep these things in mind but I also would like for you to in addition to Acts chapter 12 I would like to give you Jane, uh, John chapter 15 I'm sorry and John chapter 10 verse 10 John chapter 15 verse 3 and John chapter 10 verse 10 so our second outline is entitled doers not just listeners again from the NIV translation this is James chapter 1 verses 22 through 25 do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves do what it says Verse 23, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting uh, what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. This is huge. Uh, don't deceive yourselves by just listening to the Word of God and not doing what it says. I like verse 23 that says anyone who listens to the Word and does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like uh, that 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 is what I shared with you earlier about God's forgiveness and when we look at the Word of God and we see and embrace the fact that we have been forgiven and then we walk away from God's forgiveness and we forget about the fact that the only reason that we are Christians today uh, uh, is because of God's forgiveness and yet we won't uh, adhere to 
uh, the fact that we need to let these things go and let people go from these prisons that we may have them in by not forgiving and not letting it go I'm going somewhere with this uh, church because this is what is happening to us today we are literally destroying ourselves because of our anger issues uh, we are doing things to one another because our hearts have gotten hot and our minds have gotten hot and we have conspired to to repay evil for evil we have vowed to uh, and engaged into an eye for an eye and this is the kind of culture that spires out of control if the Christian doesn't show the righteousness of God through forgiveness who will do that and so if I can just share a, a testimony with you just briefly before we move on uh, uh, some years ago I was uh, sitting in the barber shop getting a haircut and as the barber was uh, cutting my hair uh, and I was reflecting on my life, tears began to roll down my face. And uh, I began to think about the fact that God could have taken me in my sins. It was, it was a real uh, illumination uh, uh, for me at that time it, it, as I reflected uh, uh, my, on my past that if God had taken me in my sins, I would not be here today. I would have been lost. But the tears began to roll down off of my face because I was convicted that it was by God's grace and his mercy that allowed me to be saved. And I believe this is what James is leaning at when he talks about that when we look at this word of God and then we look at this and then we go away and we forget we forget sometimes what we really are before God uh, without Jesus or apart from Jesus Christ uh, do you know how filthy we would be without the blood of Jesus Christ do you know how unworthily we would be before God without praying uh, in the name of Jesus so uh, what I'm sharing with you is today is not to forget where the Lord have brought you from. Don't forget. Uh, 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 don't be so soon to put aside the forgiveness of God. Uh, and I like this in verse 25. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom. Right. And continues uh, in it. Not forgetting uh, what they have heard but doing it. Uh, they will be blessed in what they do. God has every right to command us to do things. He doesn't give suggestions. He gives commands. Uh, he tells us what we should do. And our uh, obligation is to, to do that thing. And if we are struggling to obey the Lord, then we need to be praying about that. If we're having issues getting past these things that uh, have been done if we don't we're going to get out of control our tongues are going to get us into trouble uh, uh, our thoughts if you will are going to get us in trouble and then you have a society in chaos uh, you you have a crime rate that 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 gets out of control because tempers are flaring and nobody's calling on the name of the Lord to help them uh, uh, to calm down if you will uh, and so this is the uh, admonition if you will that we have to actually do what the Lord uh, tells us to do but because the New Testament canon uh, had not been completed many of James listeners uh, only had the Old Testament writings and his letter of God's Word uh, that's why uh, he referred to the law as uh, the perfect law that gives freedom. So uh, we infer from his phrase gives freedom that James was not referring to the law as perverted by the Jewish religious leaders. Uh, that perverted law was burdensome. So far beyond bringing freedom. Instead James was referring to the law as Jesus laid forth in his sermon on the mount again back over in James chapter 5 
But it's important for us to understand that, uh, and we'll get there as we go a little bit further in our next outline, that we have this law of obligation and Jesus has to be at the center of our dealings. Uh, we have to remember, and I like this, what uh, James was referring to the law as Jesus laid forth in his sermon. Jesus told us how to handle these things. Jesus taught us through salvation uh, that it was better for us to forgive one another than to exhibit a, a, a character, if you will, of unforgiveness and thus getting out of control. But I would like for you, if you will, um, at your leisure, take a look at James chapter 6, uh, verse 2, the first epistle of John chapter 2, uh, verse 7, verse 8, and verse 15, the second epistle of John, verse 5, and then Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. Those will help you unpack what we've shared. But considering how ridiculous it would be for people to look into a mirror and then ignore what they saw, saw how do verses 22 and 23 apply? So again, we shared with you, you should never forget where the Lord have brought you from and what you are enjoying uh, uh, at this time even as a believer. Uh, it would be ridiculous, right, for people to look into a mirror and then ignore what they saw. How do you look at the Word of God and not see yourself? How do you look, how do you read the Word of God and see how blessed you are and how that Christ intervened when we, the Bible said, while we were yet in sin, Jesus died for the ungodly. How do we look at the word of God and fail to remember that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, you and I would have perished quickly in the way. How ridiculous would it be for us to read the word of God and not see that the Lord didn't have to wake us up this morning, that he didn't have to save us as a songwriter say, but he did. He didn't have to wake me, but he did. And so how ridiculous would it be for us to look at the word of God and forget about the sacrifice that Jesus uh, uh, made at Calvary on our behalf. Even before we came into this world, salvation had been provided for us because God knew that we were coming into this world and that we needed to be saved. So how ridiculous would it be for, not, for us to look at the word of God and not understand that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. How ridiculous would it be for us to look and read the word of God and not appreciate the fact that we needed to pray for those who uh, spitefully misuse us, that we need to pray for our enemies. And this is something that I do and I will share with you before we move to our, our last outline. And this is something that I do for my enemies, those that I know about. Uh, I call their names out to the Lord and I ask the Lord to save them. Uh, 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 I asked the Lord to heal them. I asked the Lord to set them free. Uh, it took some time for me to get to that point, but it took God to help me to understand that that's where I was. Uh, that, 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 that my mama or my mother prayed for me, had me on their mind took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. So when you were unfit and, and, and not praying for yourself, somebody prayed for you, had you on their mind. And so we have to be mature enough as Christians to talk to God about those who do things to us or uh, 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 the, the, those who or seek to cause us harm if Jesus could do it and showed us how to do it even from the cross even from a place where he was uh, 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 set to die where he was being 
publicly humiliated. He was able to pray for those. He understood that they didn't know what they were doing. He understood that they didn't have the love of God in their hearts. That's the only reason why they would be uh, crucifying a Savior who had only come to save them. And, and so when we, uh, uh, when people are doing things to them, to us, we don't we, we have to understand that they're doing things to us because they don't understand who we are. And it's incumbent upon us to pray. It's incumbent upon us to pray for them. We have to be able to pray for them and ask God to forgive them. Why? Because that's what we receive. Why? Because we were we read the word of God and we understand that's how we got saved. And so uh, we just need to understand these things. Then we begin to embrace the righteousness of God. Those who are in right standing with God who are able to exhibit the things uh, of God that they have received. I hope that makes sense for us today. But our last outline is entitled Real Religion. This is taken from James chapter 1 verses 26 and 27 and again from the NIV translation. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Verse 27, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world that is huge today so so we want to make sure that that we uh, consider uh, uh, what the word of the Lord is telling us here those who consider themselves religious and can't keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless and I think we all need help in this area of talking not just talking but talking too much saying the wrong thing offending someone we are all guilty of these things and certainly we need to ask God to uh, uh, forgive us and repent of those things uh, we have all been in an area where we let the first thing come up come out and then we had to go back and apologize. Hopefully you did that and atone for those things and ask the forgiveness of our brothers and sisters. Uh, we certainly have all engaged in conversation where uh, we should have kept our mouths closed. And so uh, we, want, we want to uh, 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 you know, ask God to help us in these areas where we can't let it go, where we just keep talking and we keep getting deeper into these situations. Uh, that become uh, unfruitful not just for us but those who we engage in these activities so here uh, returning to his opening statement in verse 19 James again focused on being slow to speak by being slow to speak believers can keep a tight rein on their tongues I want you to look at James chapter 3 verse 9 James chapter 4 verse 11 and 12 and then uh, James chapter 5 uh, verse 12 so if we are brutally honest with ourselves many of us have gotten ourselves into some bad situations simply because we spoke without thinking once our words leave our mouths we are no longer we no longer have control over them that is why it's important that we strongly consider what we are going to say before we say it our consideration should always include uh, uh, what would Jesus do right reflection and a short prayer of the Holy Spirit to intervene I'll just say this to you today the Holy Spirit is there as our ally and sometimes we don't we don't engage him we don't ask for his help we choose to be grown uh, we choose to be three times seven we choose to be uh, 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 forthright and we choose to be right uh, but we fail to be righteous and so uh, uh, we have to make sure uh, that we uh, do a better job of uh, asking the Lord to help us uh, you know when you go in prayer and uh, sometimes and I don't mean this to be uh, funny and I don't mean to uh, uh, certainly offend anyone but sometimes we have to pray for our mouths 
you know we have to pray just like we ask for other things of God we have to pray for our mindsets we have to pray for our tongue uh, if you will because uh, sometimes we engage in ways that we uh, we shouldn't and this is what the lesson is saying uh, and again once those words get out and they are offensive uh, we never know how the individual is going to perceive that and what they may do as a result and so uh, sometimes the hardest thing to do is to walk away we want to engage we want to stay there and win this thing but it might be better uh, to make a good run right as opposed to a bad stand and so uh, we have to make sure that uh, uh, we make sure that we understand that these things are on the table for in a, any culture uh, that we live in and we can see it running rapid uh, today this is how quarrels and fights and and escalations into violence proceed because of what someone said and then it was perceived that this individual needed to do something about it and so they acted accordingly so we want to keep these things in mind this is a very um, uh, practical lesson for us uh, but uh, James example is a reminder of Jesus uh, call to do for the least of these uh, James uh, this is in Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 through uh, 46 but we are supposed to get involved into helping uh, one another James ex uh, stresses concern for widows and orphans as a true measure of obedience that is pleasing to God uh, it reflects the concerns of God himself I want you to look at Deuteronomy chapter 10 uh, verse 18 Psalms 8 uh, Psalm, I'm sorry, Psalm 9, verse 18. And this is something that Israel was given the responsibility in the Old Testament. Um, I also want you to look at Deuteronomy chapter 14, uh, verse 29, and then Ezekiel chapter 22, uh, verse 7. But it's important that uh, we have all sorts of we know that we have all sorts of governmental and private social programs today however uh, God is still calling on the congregations uh, to be on the front line of helping second we need to be careful about corrupting our faith this corruption uh, may take the form of being hypocritical in our daily walk with the Lord or simply going through the motions in our worship so God wants us to be different uh, from the world you know he does not want people to wonder whether we are Christians or not but rather our lives ought to shout boldly I am a child of God and so we will leave it there and we certainly thank and praise God that we had an opportunity to share uh, this practical lesson uh, with you and we hope that uh, as we continue to engage the Word of God that we see ourselves and we're nothing but sinners saved by the grace of God and so God is admonishing us to exemplify the characteristics of Jesus Christ himself and don't worry this won't be done in 24 hours it takes time to make a Christian it takes time for us to, to, to be developed uh, into what God would have us to be don't worry you can't do this by yourself it is clearly uh, a work of the Holy Spirit we do have to cooperate but uh, uh, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith so I want to keep those things in mind I, before I uh, close I want to have prayer as I do with us today because I know that uh, uh, we are going through uh, I know we are stretched in our faith we're stretched in our uh, hope we're stretched in our uh, uh, capacity to even uh, uh, wonder what tomorrow may hold and some of us may be at different levels in our faith but I want to cover us all whatever level you are on and wherever you may be struggling at in your life I certainly have my own struggles but I want to offer this prayer that we would hold to God's unchanging hand and that we would build our hopes on things eternal 
Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this great privilege today. We thank you for your word. It is true. We thank you for those under the sound of my voice, those who are able to log on to this message today. We thank you for those who have been following along in your word and those who have just gathered around to be comforted. We realize, God, that we are going through many things today. We are in uh, seeing many troubles today from the White House down to our houses and we are praying today that you would look and have mercy on those in government those that are in leadership and authority and we certainly want to lift up all the believers in prayer today all of those of the household of faith today we thank you for your goodness your mercy and your grace we thank you for just giving us yet another opportunity to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth father we thank you most of all for jesus for giving his life and shedding his blood for our sins today father we just thank you that we are able to call on you in behalf of so many we need you in every area of our lives today we're praying for families today we're praying for first responders and we're praying, oh God, for healing. We're praying for salvation. We just come to take our stand against the enemy who comes to sift us as wheat, who comes to kill and to steal and to destroy. We come against these forces of evil in the mighty name of Jesus who comes to rob us of our hope of the promises that have been duly given to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, we pray that those that are listening today are strengthened today. Strengthen them in their minds. Strengthen them in their hearts. Strengthen them in their bodies in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them a mind to run on and see what the end is going to be. Give them a mind to hold up the blood-stained banner of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, give us a mind to stay in your word where we might be able to read and that our faith might be increased. Help us, O oh God, to hold on in these last and evil days. And we'll be so careful and mindful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. So again, we thank God for you. Just know that we love you and that our prayers are constantly going up to God for you and for your families, for everything that you need. And we know that God is able to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.